in the Vatican that they worship to this day. They used to worship as Saint Nick, Saint Maurice, Septimus Severus, all of them. No, no, look. You've been in Europe, right? Mm -hmm. Who's the temple of Isis? <laughs> Brother, they literally have, in England, they have the Moors. This is a big areas of land that they dedicated, they gave to black people because they worship them. You have more land, you have the Moors, you have oh. Black and Moor. You have all of this Moor land that they gave to the Moors because the Moors civilized them. If you got all these people coming across with all this knowledge, all this information, teaching them how to bathe, teach them about math science, teach them about agriculture, you're going to give them the land because you don't know what to do with it. Exactly. You're going to forfeit the land when somebody how did how did black men in the south get hundreds of acres how did they secure these are acres that negroes that are our generation they dropped the ball they be mm. great grandfather your great grandfather was a he was a he was a rich nigger first of all your great grandfather had two shotguns and a handgun and he wasn't mm -hmm. nobody your great grandfather woke up at 5 a.m. Your great grandfather was not selling drugs to his people. Matter mm -hmm. of fact, your great grandfather was a fucking legend because the nigga got 500 acres in the Carolinas. This mm -hmm. parents. And mm -hmm. we find them in the city trying to be a city slicker, looking real crazy, out of place. <laughs> right? Looking all out of place when they could have been tending to the farm. And in in because we deal with the now, they would have been mm. right now. Imagine mm. somebody alive in the now. What's mm. today? Saying family, family, mm. uh, <laughs> five hundred acres. <laughs> <laughs> this is the beginning of Wakanda. Like, let's. Man. You would be a legend, but right. what they sold it for a Lexus. They sold it for a Rolex. They sold it for the dreams to, to, to run behind, you know, people in a city who are living on top of each other. And now, where do we find ourselves, Shaka? Where is the great exodus again? I'm in New York. I came back to New York today. I've never seen this city look the way that it looks like right now. This is Gotham City, and it's the great escape. I was on 42nd Street, and it was bone dry. It had barricaded windows with... With armies of police, look, and they were guarding nothing because there was nothing to guard. <laughs> and and I came to the, I asked the officer. I said, officer, I know that you're a policy officer, meaning that you 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 guard corporations, right? Mm -hmm. But I said, I know you don't work for me. I know you're not here to serve and protect me. But what the hell are you doing on Forty Second Street? What are you protecting? <laughs> Hats? What are you protecting? Souvenirs? <laughs> so <laughs> it's gotten to the point where it's the mass exodus out the city. Because if the Europeans flooded the inner cities with what we call gentrification, then they left the country open with mm. 5G, with radiation, with COVID-19, with the lack of food, with food deserts, with goddamn urban killing fields. Now is the time, and with the knowledge that we've gained, because we've all been in school, we know how to till the soil, we know about the electric body, we know about plant base, we know how to live off the land, we know about alkaline, we know about solar, we know about grounding, we know about a lot of things. So all of these things, going back to what I was saying earlier when I was talking to my whiz, all of these things are dealing with the opposite of the city. Mm -hmm. City. Well was P. Diddy, P. Diddy, that's <laughs> Diddy era. P. Diddy made me pretty. That's big city, big lights. That's the shiny suit theory. That is over, family. We back over. on all. You know what I'm saying? Like, you see how Shaka is? With no fucking clothes? You think I don't want to be on live, butt-ass naked? <laughs> yeah, the, you need to be somewhere hot first. That's I got to be somewhere hot. I would, look, I would be mad goofy. I, I'd be shivering on the live. Like, it's not hot enough for me. <laughs> But the new black, the new successful, that's the new piece right there. You see that right there? That's the new piece. That's how your DNA is going to heal. Remember, DNA responds to environment. 
We have to put ourselves in environments that are healing environments. We have to surround ourselves with trees, greenery, water. We are mostly water. Yo, you see how she? You see how she's pregnant? Is she pregnant? Mm. Can you swim to that? Yeah, if I want to. It's a bit far. I go out there to go free diving, so I'll go down like. 30, 40 feet and just spend some time at the bottom of the ocean with my breath held. This dude right here. Who are you, Aquaman? What's going on? <laughs> you got a scuba? You got the scuba gear or you could go underwater? No, I just hold my breath. This, that, you're a legend. That, that's what's up. Chancellor Williams, there you go. So what Chaka is showing you is that, you know, for all of my brothers and sisters that are just waking up, and they're like, yo, who's who's the teacher? Who do we go to? Everything, I promise you. And I, and I mean, there's, there's going to be some revising, of course. But 89.9% .9 of what we need has already been put inside of a book. Mm. It's not on YouTube. No offense to the YouTube. I got a thousand videos on YouTube. And I'm here to let you know it's not on YouTube. It's in the books. Mm. The yeah. Of our master teachers are authors. That is overlooked. People don't bring that up. They don't say the name of the teacher along with the fact that they're an author. I just got off of a meditation uh, alive with Queen of Four, an author. Sacred woman. I went into a, a, a very famous bookstore right in LA and they, they had her book featured prominently. That was a watershed moment for me. You feel mm. that I remember trying to convince people to even look in the book mm. now is being accepted. Professor Griff is an author. Amos Wilson is an author. Dr. Francis Cress Wilson. Dr. Phil Valentine is an author. Um, C. Freeman L. is an author. Uh, Bobby Hemet even wrote a book. If I was in my other house, I would show you the book that I got from Bobby. I got a brother. I got a book from a brother named Cosmo Setin Ra. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, I got his book. He signed it for me. Um, Laila, Laila or Layla Africa. People need to say that name more. Dr. Er, Laila Africa. Yes, yes. I, I have the honors of having a, a signed book by Dr. Layla Africa as well. Um, we have so many authors, and we can dive into these books. We can become these books. Because mm -hmm. I read books years ago that when I picked it back up, I was reading me. I was like, damn, isn't that mm. that now not only do I overstand the book, I am the book. Mm. Do you mind if we go to some questions, my good brother? I want to I want to I want to satisfy for some of the uh, questions that the family has tonight. Okay. This one is a no brainer. You think children get kidnapped at Disneyland World? <laughs> Yes, the most one of the raven pedophiles on the planet. One of the most illest pedophiles is Walt Disney. Walt Disney, right? So, if the energy, if anything is founded on the energy of the founder, that's the energy that you'll find it in, right? Unless mm -hmm. it's completely exposed and cleansed and destroyed and then rebuilt, and that's not what happened. They're still not telling you that those uh, cartoons with Mickey Mouse had secret sexual connotations to it, right? Mm -hmm. Which goes back to what we were saying earlier, that there's a middleman that is in the way of our sexual training, the way that we have sexual education, our sexual... <coughs> there's somebody that is perverting it. There's a man named Edward Bernay, and there's a documentary called Century of Self, so, and there's yeah. a psychologist, Sigmund Freud, and a whole mm -hmm. bunch of them, and they study... A Western man's sexual appetite and psychology. There's a movie called American Psycho as well. That is a must watch. Go ahead. In, in the book, Handbook for Raising Black Children by Dr. Africa, he breaks down in that book how fairy tales have sexually seasoned children. So oh. they have all these fairy tales about Sleeping Beauty, so where you, you find a woman and she's asleep, so you rape her mouth. There's um, Little Red Riding Hood sending your kid off into the woods to be able to be 
uh, attacked by or raped by a wolf, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we're telling our children all of these fairy tales. And a lot of people don't even know that before Stan Lee in, I think it was 1963 or 1964, before he came up with Spider-Man, the stories of Anansi the Spider-Man, which is a West African and a Caribbean uh, uh, folklore tale about morality were there and he was the only Spider-Man that we ever knew. Then he put it into Marvel and now all of a sudden everybody's like, you know, Stan Lee is a genius. But a lot of Stan Lee's ideas from the idea of uh, Wakanda and an African, uh, uh, an African colony or empire that wasn't colonized to the ideas of um, X-Men and the, the, the Magneto, Malcolm X and Martin Luther King, and Professor Xavier, all of these ideas are just ideas that they've taken from our struggles, rebranded it, made loads of money from it. And then you have to look, if you look into all of the movies and all of the symbiology in all of the movies, it's always the underdog. It's always the empire. Star Wars, every, a lot of people don't know that George Lucas's wife is black, right? And Star Wars, the idea between, behind Star Wars is the idea of the empire, versus the people so it's the idea of black people versus racism this is what the idea of star wars is about one of the most successful movies ever the next most successful or series of movies the next most successful movie ever avatar is about the destruction of congo for our our, our mineral that we use in our, our mobile phones coltan right tungsten but that's what the real vibranium is which leads me on to the next biggest grossing movie ever which is black panther which is talking about vibranium which is coltan which is congo which leads me on to the next biggest grossing movie ever which is the matrix which is written by a black woman so you just start going through all these things you're like oh so so their biggest stories and then most of their movies are actually alien horror stories about how an alien threat is going to come to attack the world and we're all going to have to save it because the real threat is the American empire. That's what the real threat is. Not yeah. aliens are going to come and attack us. They think that aliens are going to do to us what they did to black people. That's right. And the oldest myth told in story is the Asaurian myth. Mm -hmm. Son avenging the father's death. You find that in Kung mm. You find that in Batman. You find that in the, the comic books. It is a template. And they've copied this template. Time or more. Let let's get to these questions, though. Is there such a thing as Freemasonry sacrifice season? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's to do with what's the moon, what the moon is doing. Facts. If you want to deal with the sacrifice, that would be Jason, July, August, September, October, November. When you celebrate um, Thanksgiving at the end of November, you complete the ritual, right? Mm -hmm. You complete the ritual when you're celebrating Columbus Day, you're feeding the ritual. When you're doing Thanksgiving, you're feeding the ritual. Fourth of July, you're feeding the ritual. They have a whole litany of holidays or hell or hell or holy days or hell days that you're giving your energy. Remember, the energy is the people. You are the battery, especially the melanated people. It's the fact that we agreed that Thanksgiving is lit. That's why it's lit. It's the fact that we agreed that Christmas was what it was. That's why it is what it is. We kind of warming up on Christmas. They don't even mention Santa Claus no more. And it's almost like an unwritten rule that the kids is like, nigga, you bought that, so stop it. And not going for that Santa Claus. The new generation is shaking that shit off. Somebody said escape America, question mark. And go where? Ghana. <laughs> if you're black. My Ghana. Thing, I don't want to escape anywhere. I want to mm. be proactive in what I do. I don't never ever want to land in no one's country or continent on the run. So, and if you land somewhere on the run, you should be going you should be on the run for a reason. Yeah, you run from doing something. I'm not just because mm -hmm. Trump got elected and I'm running. Oh, I want to live in your country. That's not mm. you're not going to you're not going to make the kind of breakthroughs. You're not you're not touching down. The minute you touch that concrete or that soil, 
there should be a frequency. So I would say pack up and relocate because opportunities in Africa are going to eclipse with America. In this new paradigm, I feel that opportunities on a continent are going to eclipse the opportunities that are available in other places. You know what I mean? Not to mm. what is happening on the American continent, but Africa is about to really roar. It's about to really... They said that if you... Uh, I, had a, I had a reading, a spiritual reading. They said when the Africans successfully removed... And Drew Ali said this to the Moors. When the Africans are successful in removing this latest iteration of the European and the Asian off of the land, then they will discover the other 80% of mineral wealth that has not been discovered. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, it's not, it's not gonna be discovered. And even, the, and even in the Americas, it's so much that has not been discovered because they don't know where to look. <coughs> Keep in mind, they are looking now. They're, they're, how, how, how are these people, how are you convinced that these people been here for a long time? If they're they're just reading, they're just naming flowers and shit like that. They're just naming insects, like yo, we just found a new colony of insects in 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 uh in Bulgaria. You like you you niggas been there for how long? You just finding an insect? Like, what the fuck were you doing for a million years? We found shit, named shit. Somebody else came after us, renamed shit, then somebody else came and gave it another name. Then it was a cochlea oko o o o o o. And then the European came and was like, oh, no, nah, that's a pigeon. <laughs> this is a new name. These are some new people. Think about it. We're done with naming shit. We forgot shit that we named. This right. We forgot civilizations we created. We, we, we got to take plant-based medicines to remember shit that we named. Mm. They, right. They're... They, they don't remember anything. They're just finding it. Let me go to these other questions. But before you go to a question, let me read something. Uh, I haven't shared this before, but my mother, she's actually a master teacher. She's a psychologist, um, philosopher, and she, as well as uh, being um, uh, a master of film and photography, um, she was doing that degree when I was actually going through school. Oh. Um, she okay. also, she also um, is a social scientist. So she wrote this dissertation. She's actually, this is really interesting. I'm going to publish this. Um, she wrote, uh, well, she she's writing right now about the psychology of Karen and white women, uh, white women's involvement in racism. That's going to be really tasty, you know, because she knows how to put. But the thing is, is that she writes as a scholar, as an as a, as a, uh, academician. So I'll read this and it, stay with it. Just stay with it, right? Mm -hmm. This is about um, identity, right? She writes this. Uh, my mother, her name is Alicia Campbell. She writes this. Contemporary theorists debate the notion that identity is formed, then fixed that we can have an identity, proposing instead that identity is an unstable discourse between society and ourselves, which is fluid and in continual construction. Stuart Hall states when referring to this theory of anti-essentialism, it accepts that identities are never unified and in late modern times, increasingly fragmented, fractured, never singular, but multiply, multiply constructed across different, often intersecting, antagonistic discourses, practices and positions. Moreover, Hall concurs with Derrida and Laclau in asserting that identities are constructed around points of difference, binary oppositions, i.e. man, woman, black, white, rather than being defined by what we are. By what we are, our, our identities are constructed by what we are not, excluding the other. However, the oppositions are never equal. A hierarchy is established when one position is naturalized, i.e. white is natural, therefore Black is unnatural. It is the opposition to black that constitutes and forms the identity of white. Thus, the security of identity is not determined by what is inside, but the constitutive, the constitutive outside created through the specific modalities of power. Therefore, the question is not what is identity, but how is it negotiated? The concept of identity is a social construction in itself, 
which is which is reliant on shared cultural meaning to be infect to be effective. Hall offers a theory of sutra of being between processes of interpolation and articulation, expanding on Althus's Althus's theory of interpolation, whereby we are summoned into subject positions. So therefore, somebody says you're a nigger, so that's what you are, right? You start calling yourself it, right? Um, um, Hall argues that suturing requires not just interpolation, but articulation by the subject of that position, establishing a two-way process. So someone calls you a nigger, right? But if you don't agree with that, identify with that, or call yourself that, you don't have a two-way relationship, and that, that then has no power. There's no... Right? Right, exactly. Um, identities are thus points of temporary attachment to, to the subject positions which discursive practices construct for us. To understand the practices of these discourses, we must apply semiotics. To paraphrase Chris Baker, author, author of uh, television, globalization and cultural identities, language is a pathway to identity. Language enables the formation of relationships within society. Culture uses the language, the language of representation and the understanding of these codes termed is semiotics. Semiotics, analyze, semi, semiotics analyzes how meaning is produced through um, symbolic systems and signifying practices. But this is the interesting bit because this goes on to how a mythology or how a myth is created. Because the whole, this whole uh, PDF is like 20 pages. is called The Myth. That's the title of, of it. I should have said it at the beginning. Yeah. Um, there are three orders of signification. The first order of signification are signs, arbitrary and iconic. Ar arbitrary bears no direct relation to the object it represents, i.e. there is no logical reason for an apple to be termed as such. Iconic signs are motivi motivated by a literal relationship with the object. For instance, a cross being termed a cross. The second order of, order of signification are myths and cognitive agents. Myths are formed when, represent when representation takes on cultural meaning. Myth must serve a cultural need and are dynamic, constantly updating along with society in which they function. They operate in a chain, working with other myths. For example, we could um, examine the myth of the East End villain, exemplified by the Cray twins. Although they were gangsters and murderers, um, a myth of charm and acceptability was constructed around them, which, is, which was then extended to East End villains, this is London we're talking about, to East End villains as a whole. The purpose of myth is to naturalize the constructed, transmute the historical into trans-historical. So, oh. the, yeah. the myth of white supremacy, power, mm -hmm. Hollywood. Mm. The myth, right? The same mm -hmm. you just said, this mystique that they paint around a cowboy the mystique mm -hmm. that they painted around the Italian mobster, when it was the Jewish mobster that was the most uh, bloodiest, right? He was the mm -hmm. most, he was the most murderous. He was mm -hmm. so hearted, but he put the Italian mobster out there. Why? Because he because the Jew controlled Hollywood, and mm -hmm. of the thug, the myth mm -hmm. nigga, the myth of the black quote unquote savage, right? Because mm -hmm. it away they mythologized us. We are the mm -hmm a sleigh in Spain. We are the quote unquote goat. We are Baphomet. We are, mm -hmm. the, we are the, we are the, we are the, you know, they cut the, uh, they cut the phallus of the, we, we are always the Illuminati. We're always the Illuminati. We are Satan. We're Saturn. We are the dark one. We are the unknown to them. That's mm -hmm. the, you know, so, mm -hmm. and when they mythologize something, they could demonize it so they could kill it easier. But please go ahead. Mm -hmm. Um, so the purpose of myth is to naturalize the constructed, transmute the historical into the trans-historical. So the myth of the accepted face of violence becomes a fact, something that simply just exists. It is not hidden, but is disguised as reality. What the world supplies to, what the world supplies to myth is a historical reality defined, even if it goes back quite a while by the way which men have produced or used it. What myth? Uh, gives back in return is a natural image of this reality, um, Roland Barthes. Mm -hmm. Cognitive agents are the signifiers of emotions that this is how practitioners of representation express sub subjective qualities. For example, the use of a color 
or type of the weather in a film shot. So for instance, every time they shoot, every time they shoot Mexico, it's like some orange filter and that's they always put, but Mexico is not orange or type of the weather in a film shot to imbue it with the feeling of freshness or gloom. The third order of signification is mythology, which uh, is the system created by a combined chain of myths. Myth organize around, uh, sorry, myth organize meaning and are organized into mythologies. Mythologies operate on a subconscious level, projecting the status quo of a culture. Ideology is a set of ideas which a culture, on which a culture is based. Mythologies perpetuate those ideas, facilitating their dominance. The work of ideology is to present the position of the subject as fixed and fixed and unchangeable. So mythology is a, hege a hegemonic process that ensures the success of an ideology. Hegemony is explained first by the key concepts in cultural theory. Rule must be based in consent. The, in, the, intellectual sympathetic, sorry, the intellectual sympathetic to the ruling class will therefore work to preserve the ideas and justifications um, in the class's domination coherent, coherently and uh, persuasively. This, I mean, I'm going to finish now. This uh, is achieved critically through mass media and the elite's control of it. This theory was developed by the Marxist Antonio Gramsci and moved away from the traditional Marxist view that ideology was imposed on the working class who passively accepted it. Rather, a discourse developed that, that negotiates power in the same way as identity is negotiated. So basically, what she's saying there is that every, every, um, every power modality mm -hmm. has to create this idea of myth and mythology. So out of, they create a myth, and then they make it transhistorical. They pour into this myth. Uh, they attach emotion to it. They make you like the myth. Then that myth becomes a mythology. And that mythology is used to perpetuate an ideology. For instance, like you said, white supremacy. White, white did not exist 400 years ago. There was no such thing as white. No, not just 400 years, Shaka. 200. The, the wigger more beard is it's a, it's a social construct so theoretically speaking family and 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 for those who are doing the rallies and the marches the power is in those fucking placards and those goddamn signs that y'all write i can't breathe i can't breathe you're telling people you can't breathe it's, you're you're casting a spell it's not right why don't we change the energy and start doing you know white supremacy is a myth white people are a myth right and if you're on the line and you're white, I'm saying that you're a myth. I'm saying that there's no such thing as white, that you're not the color white. You know what I mean? You, you, there's some social scientists amongst you that adopted a color that's a pure color, of course, you know, white. Being what it is, uh, naturally, they basically misnom they, 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 they misnomered your whole race. Because you're not a color, right? Yeah. Your personality. You are an Irish man. You're an Italian. You're a German. You're a Frank. You're not white. And if, if you, sorry to cut you. Yeah. If you want to go deeper into that, actually, they had their own indigenous people. They had people who'd lived there for thousands of years. They had the Druids, the Gauls, the witches, the warlocks. They had all these people. Mm -hmm. And they fucking killed them and they burned them. So they destroyed their own indigenous knowledge. And now whenever they want to get found, they go to eat, pray, love to India. They go to Thailand. They go anywhere apart from Africa. When they go to Africa, they want to take Christianity. When they go to India and shit, they don't try and take Christianity. They want to go and adopt Hinduism. They, they practice orientalism, mm -hmm. right? Following the, the, the paths of their forefathers who went into the East to receive mm. you know, all of these teachings and all of this wisdom and whatnot. They call it Orientalism and Occidental, mm. um, Occidentalism and whatnot. And, you know, like you said, when they go to the dark continent, they're going to the dark continent to do what? To convert. The only reason that they're going there is to convert, to forsake the father. Mm. To civilize. That's how they stole Congo is they went and, and to Congo under the premise, like, uh, what's his name? Uh, 
of France. Uh, Leopold, King, King Leopold of, of Belgium. Or Leopold, because it was King Alfonso's and them. They were, they were the Portuguese, and they were Christian. Mm. But they were turning these African kings of the Congo, not the modern day Congo, the Congo mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. And they were, they were, they were European. They were Anglicizing them. So you have mm -hmm. the first, the second, the third, and you know, once you get out, and these are tribes. These are different tribes. Mm -hmm. Africa in its tribal phase. So you can't utilize the whole aspect of well, they should all just get along. No, no, no. They were, they, they, they never got along yeah. like that. They were territorial states. Yeah, you must not have never lived around no ter no tribes or no territorial states. Mm -hmm. That's not how it works. It's never worked like that. You know, mm -hmm. it's almost like a pride of lions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's other lions out there. But this group of lions, they feel like they lit, and they got and they got mm -hmm. a they they women is choosing the lioness is choosing. What's what's Simba's white? What's Simba's shorty name? The one that Beyonce played. Um, uh, Simba Lala. Yeah, she's choosing. She's, <laughs> so she might fuck around and choose Scar over Simba, and then it's a rap for Simba. Mm. And that goes all the way back. If you really want to simplify this thing, because I'm not, I'm, I'm into making things simple. To, to Aset and Asa and Heru. Yeah, but <clears throat> when we say that time repeats itself, and when we say that we live in the cycles of time, we could see that same because our evil uncle set, right? And the persecuted penis. Mm hmm. A saw's wood off. They cut them in fourteen pieces, but mm -hmm. the, this on the myth is about the penis, right? Because all set resurrected. Yes, all set resurrected him by bringing by bringing that back. So mm -hmm. one of the oldest conflicts is taking place in Western in the Western world. I don't know. I can't speak for the Eastern world because I'm not over there right now. But in the Western world, there's a battle taking place between the white man and the black man. And their woman is right in the middle. And so is ours. Mm -hmm. The jewel or the prize in all war, in all war, from time immemorial, and it never changed, is always the quote-unquote female. It's the woman. It's the mama. Okay, always it's the woman. So there's a conflict taking place between a genetic strain and another genetic strain, right? A superior strain and an inferior, or what they would call a regressive virus. A virus, because when the invasion of the Americas took place, and the Americas is the Caribbean. It's North America, it's South America, it's Central America. Before they carved it up, it's the continent of the Americas. So when they came to the Americas and they defeated the Moors in 1492, the Battle of Alhambra with, Al with uh, Muhammad X uh, and whatnot, and King Leopold, I mean, King Ferdinand, Queen Isabella, Aragon and Castile was the was those were the provinces before it became Spain and Portugal. Mm -hmm. When they came into the Americas, he came to Santa Domingo first. Mm -hmm. the, so you want to we, we we're living in this COVID nineteen phase two and whatnot, and we're talking about pandemics and plagues, and we're speaking. Everybody is now now we've known about immunity. Now we know about immune system. We've all gone to school, right? They, they took sports away from us. They took the kids out of the public full system. And we went to you. All of us went to YouTube Academy. So now we know about viruses. Now we know about. But did you know that the Europeans were the one who brought the viruses here? Did you know that when they brought the smallpox, gonorrhea, syphilis, uh, 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 halitosis, bad breath, um, all of these things when they brought that over here and it wasn't just quote unquote the europeans that you see today because europe at that time was amalgamated so you had mulattoes 
You had people of amalgamation. You had people that were blue black that were working with them. It wasn't mm -hmm. they weren't dealing with the racism thing like they're dealing with now. Similar to when you go to Europe, you're going to see race relations a little bit different than what you're going to see in the Americas. Because in the Americas, when they've adopted this fake this fake identity as white, mm -hmm. go other places, they like, oh yeah, we're white, All right. right? That's what we are. Y the same yeah. Or to Africa, you'd be like, yo, we black. And they like... Jews weren't white. Yeah. Irish weren't white. Italians yeah. weren't white. They was all niggas to them. They was all... Look, Irish was niggas. Italian... Do you know that the reason why they celebrate Christopher Columbus Day in America is because they lynched 19 Italians in 1920, I believe, because they first came into Louisiana and they lynched them niggas because, they, because the Italians with some niggas with wavy hair. That's what the European, the Italians was niggas with hair. If they came out of Sicily, they were olive complexion because they had morals. <laughs> and they hung 19 of them. There was a there was a there was there was some kind of trial and they hung them and Italy was ready to go to war. And as a way to <laughs> give them a band-aid they were like, you know what? We're going to elevate, we're going to edify Christopher Columbus. Going back to what you were saying earlier, the myth, they created a myth. Because if you do the research, Christopher Columbus edification is recent. And, and, and the fact that we see those statues coming down, if y'all really want to make a change, the fact that they spray painted the Robert E. Lee, that was the most gangster thing out of all of the protests outside of the lightning hitting the obelisk or hitting the tech new and splitting that flag in half. That was the most important thing that I could, that if you want to talk about points on the board, right? If you want to talk about scoring one for the team, you have, that was it right there. The desec the total desecration of a monument that represents a myth that is still being cast over the of subservience of the uh, uh, uh within the borders of the america and because this is the america empire foreign as well the key is christopher columbus and robert e lee if you want to deal with figureheads you have to deal with because i say hit him with hit him you know hit the snake hit the head of the state the head of the snake stop chasing the tail and stop chasing they got you chasing the tail of the snake when the head of the snake is always going to be hidden. It's like boxing. You doing the boxing thing, right, Chaka? They say, mm -hmm. the head. There you go. Christopher Columbus, African Holocaust. So the way the rituals work, when we, if we don't riot on his day, if we don't turn up, if we don't break the statues, then we acquiesce to the goddamn ritual. And mm -hmm. the day after Columbus Day, the stock market is boosted up. These people, that, <laughs> they, they get... I've, I've seen that about every time a black person gets killed, the, the stock market rises. And, and, and that, that right there has to be the same way. And I wanted to say this too, because I gave thanks to 19 Key's mother last night for mm. bringing to this planet. And I'm giving thanks to your Umi for bringing you to this planet. We have to honor our Umis while we're here. Okay, mm -hmm. that is very important, and I give thanks to my father. He did his thing, you know. And one of the things that I'm realizing is that we need a group of brothers and researchers to do a paper, a dissertation, the same way that Chaumi broke that down. We need some of our intellects because our brain trust is our most important asset that we have in Black America right now. And let me just share with you an example of what I mean. If they were to, re if they were to remove the master teachers like Elijah Muhammad, Marcus Garvey, Noble Drew Ali, you know, all of the brothers that I named that were the authors, you know, everyone mm -hmm. put the pen to the paper and did their thing. If they were to remove the YouTube scholars, if they were to remove the conscious community, what would Black America? What would the state of Black America be in right now? Um, you know, from a scale of one to ten, ten being the most lit, one being in complete darkness. One. All right. Less than one. <laughs> All right. 
So in the law of power, in the book of power, it says that you can measure your power by removing yourself from a situation and then and then going back to that situation to say, did you miss me, niggas? Because mm. y'all were quote unquote, you thought that you you thought that you you thought it was you. You thought you had it lit. Like Jay Z mm. told Ash, well shit, make another Jay Z if it's like that. Mm. And you could realize how much you bring to the table by either flipping over. You don't got to flip over the table. Just leave the table and then you'll start seeing things on the table go stale and nobody is sitting at the table. When you sit back at the table, that's when they all come to the table. So you are the table. Well, I've, I've come to realize in this time that, well, I mean, we go back to where the conversation started nearly two hours ago. Mm -hmm. Famous subjective and celebrities don't mean shit. They was actually started uh, in in uh, England in the um, uh, in the Georgian times, uh, and the reason why they were started in the Georgian times is because the government, uh, which was an empire then, was yeah. doing so much of oppressing. It was doing so much oppressing of its own people that they needed to create a distraction from that. So the aristocrats or the wealthy people started paying money to news publications to talk about their lives, like what Kim Kardashian did with E! Entertainment and all that shit, so that people could get some excitement outside of their own, go to the factory, go to the field, and work every single day cleaning shoes in the street. They slave, they nine to five, they plantation life. Right, exactly. And then there was no pension, there was no uh, worker benefits, there was no health care, there was nothing like that. So they got distracted by the ruling class or the elite or the illy or the Illuminati. They got distracted by this ruling class into thinking that what they would able to be able to do is just work harder and maybe one of them will be able to get lifted up by their bootstraps and brought into this ruling class life of freedom and, and socialization and parties, soirees, get the fat cats eating lots of food and bullshit. And the reason why they wanted to distract people around the Victorian era and around the Georgian era is because they were enslaving Africans. And there was a lot of white people that weren't down with that shit. In fact, it was women in Sheffield who stopped the shackles. They were Sheffield Steel in the UK. They mm -hmm. stopped the shackles being made and they actually laid a blockade in front of the train lines that was taking the shackles to the ships to take them over to, um, to Africa to you know, lock our people up and put them in this chattel slavery. A lot of people don't, don't think about those shackles had to be made and they were made by poor white people. And there was a lot of poor white people who weren't down with that shit. And so they were part of the abolition movement because they was like, well, we're poor and we're enslaving other people and we're not even benefiting from the enslavement of those people. And so nope. now... So now you realize, like, there's people like John Brown. There's, there's a lot of, quote, unquote, white allies in the diaspora. But I want to get to talking about the continent of Africa. And the continent of Africa does not need any white allies at all. Because everybody there is black. All the resources are, 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 are there. And all of the brains are there. That's all they need is to do for themselves. In fact, if they put a border around Africa, the continent of Africa, the whole world will go broke. So in the diaspora, yeah, it's cool that the white allies are turning up and, and marching with us and protesting so that we can create some kind of civility. I mean, I'm not really necessarily into this whole nation statism corporation, the Civitas, which is a corporate body, a part of the Vatican state, which owns the corporation of the U.S., uh, uh, the, the United States corporation. I'm not necessarily into civil rights, but you got all these black people out here right now just asking, can you give us civil rights? Just be nice to us. You just, can you just be nice to us? Not human rights, not inalienable human rights. They're just asking for civil rights. And equality. And equality. They're just saying our lives matter. And you have 50% of the country that has a problem with that. That, that, that the black life matters. So when you see all these people out here talking about, oh, hands up, don't shoot. All of that shit is just throwbacks to when they gave you the Bible and told you to turn the other cheek so they could do what they wanted to do for you for, for, for um, being able to subjugate you to work on a plantation forever and murder your child and rape your wife 
and rape your husband forever and ever and ever. So when you're saying hands up, don't shoot, when you're saying I can't breathe, when you're saying black lives, of course black lives fucking matter. I don't say to no white people black lives matter because if you don't think that my life matters and you want to put hands on me about it, then I'll fucking kill you. How about that? And then you'll see that who matters. You'll see what is material and what is ethereal. Yeah, but we, 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 we never had conversations like that with white people. They would, they would probably be saying to us, you know, hands up, don't shoot me. Like, and that's not to say that, you know, we some tough guys or something, but mm -hmm. came up in New York City, the old New York, we, there was no passiveness. That, that was, un mm -hmm. yeah, and I don't understand why we are completely on defense. There's no, none of those things denotes offense. Right? If any, mm. it was sports. Yeah, you got defensive player of the year. Yeah, but the defense don't win the game alone. Defense only works with offense. That's right. Offense is being proactive. Defense is being active. So if I was a coach, I already know through the playbook on how to, how to checkmate you on defense because I could design the play. Right? Mm. So if they're designing, if they know the BLM, the marchers, the protesters and everything, they know about reactionary sciences. They know how to bring you out. They even know how to, quote unquote, push your buttons because they know mm. you're only going to be on defense. You mm. did the bomb first. You didn't set it off. You didn't body the police and they out here wilding because that never happened. Police get mm. killed. Every they never had a movement when a nigga bodied the police, mm. right? White people never marched when a white person killed a police. And they do that. Mm. They be on they, they be on they, Bonnie and Clyde a lot. Go and look at the, mm. go and look at the numbers. They, they turn up. And one of the things about the administration, this new administration, they will not report police injuries and deaths. That's why you don't see the reports of the police in New York that they were running over in the Bronx. This shit turned into Gotham City this week. Or in Louisiana, the five cops that got killed. Yeah, the five cops. And in St. Louis, they had the shootout. I had it right on my page. Mm. They speak on that. But we get to see a black man lose his quote-unquote life. Mm. Oh. We get to see a black man lose... This is, this is the thing. This is the framing around Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter came from... Black Liberation Movement came from Black Liberation Army, came from the Panthers and the Black Revolution. It did not come from telling people, please respect our lives, they matter. It came from turning up in Oakland with our guns and storming the courthouse. That's, That's what it came from. So yeah. you, have, you have all these people right now who are like, you know, if I was alive in them times, I would have done this, but now I'm going to put my hands up. No, you are going to do exactly now what you would have done back then. And if you was going to be a book dancing, shucking and jiving, scared, scary coon, that's now, right. then that's what you was going to be then. You was going to be useless then. You probably would have sold us out. You probably would have been friends with the FBI informants that were snitching on Malcolm. Instead of tap shoes, you got on them Louis Batons. But look, my, um, my mm -hmm. is running out once again. Um, for all mm -hmm. that ask the questions, please inbox me. And me and Shaka will pop back up and we will answer these questions. We might even come back tomorrow. Who knows? We can do it again. I, I can't come live on my own. I, don't worry. I'm it's, it's blocked. And look, 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 look how many people right now is tuning into my Instagram. Facts. And they 79 million people and they won't even let me go live on my own. That's how, that's how you know the thing is powerful. That's crazy. Well, regardless, I got you. You you good over here. Um, but we're going to tap back in. For the family that's out there, we still underneath this moon. Do your meditations. You know, tap in. Don't deal with no fuck energy right now. This is a very open portal. This is a powerful time. Like I said, this is leading into the summer solstice solar eclipse. So everything, this window right here is it. You're going to see this is the hot sun. So this is a red summer it's not a negative, but this is going mm -hmm. to be lit time. Keep pushing, keep learning, keep growing. Love and light. You can end it off, Shaka. Um, is what I want to say to the people is 